I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What will it look like when the church begins to use the keys that Jesus gave us? Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. It's good for us to be together. Um, I'm so glad to be a part of this. Special thanks to the worship team. It was a phenomenal time this morning in worship. And uh, as Tyler said, Greg and Michelle are ministering in South Carolina. I'm sure they're having a blast and will be eager to share it with us um, as they come back next week. So we're on a series called Keys of the Kingdom. And uh, it's all based out of Matthew 16, 19, where he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And um, Greg started us off uh, with uh, an introduction, and Tyler followed that up with the key, talking about the key of knowledge, and then Greg talked about the key of obedience. Uh, Michelle gave a great word on the key of faith. Uh, and then Greg came back last week with justice and righteousness, and I have the privilege today of talking about the key of love. So um, I recently had the privilege of being able to celebrate 30 years of marriage with my wonderful wife, Michelle. We had a fabulous time, and we got to do something uh, it was funny, when we were first married, we were high school sweethearts, and uh, we decided to plan our honeymoon to go to an all-inclusive resort, and, uh, but uh, the brakes on my 66 Mustang decided to change that. Boy, do I wish I still had that 66 Mustang. But the brakes cost some money, we had to fix those, and uh, as a result, we decided to downgrade a little bit and uh, maybe just celebrated an island somewhere, but then um, my brakes decided to do the same thing again, um, and this time I decided to throw it in park, so I thought I'd just let the transmission um, have an issue with the brakes as well. So we ended up in San Diego, California for our honeymoon. But we used to always say one year we're gonna make it back, so we had the privilege of celebrating 30 years at an all-inclusive resort. How many of you guys have ever done that? Oh my goodness, if you haven't done it, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not, an agent or anything or sales or anything like that, but I'm telling you what, that was something. It took us 30 years to get there, but it was well worth the opportunity. And, you know, if you haven't been there, you know, once you check in and you do all those things, um, you know, they take you to your room and we said, hey, we were with some friends and we said, hey, we'll hook up with you and we'll go see what's here and it's just beautiful and it's exciting. And so one of the first things we found was the coffee shop. You always got to know where the coffee shop is. And it was on the grounds and it was part of the inclusive. So I walked in there and I, they said, do you want a coffee? I said, yeah, I want a coffee. So I walked up and I ordered a, a caramel latte. And so the guy goes, coming right up. And so I was standing around looking at all, they had tons of pastries and they had an ice cream counter over here and all this stuff. And I was like, geez, this is amazing. We got our little coffee shop in here. And then he brought it over. So I opened my wallet to pay for, and I said, how much is it? And he goes, oh, no, no, it's included. And I was like, are, are you sure? And he's like, Mr. Yetta, all-inclusive resort. I'm sure, I'm sure this is, this is included. So I couldn't help but look at the pastries. And I said, and the pastries? <laughs> and he said, those, those are included as well. And I was like, oh, what about the ice cream? And he just kind of laughed. He's like, it's included. And I said, well, I'll take six cones and one of everything right here. <laughs> I didn't do that. But even when we went to dinner, I kept being hit with the truth of that, look, everything's been covered. It's all been paid for, you know, for the price that you paid. And I found out that the keys, of kingdoms, the keys to the kingdom are the same way. See, our relationship with Jesus, it's been paid for. So he gives us these keys, all inclusive. All the ones we've talked about, all of the ones we're going to talk about, they're given to you to use as the Holy Spirit guides and direct and to open and to unlock things. What an amazing thing that it is. And sometimes we can be challenged where you go, well, I'm used to paying for this. Should, shouldn't I pay for this? Or maybe this isn't the right way to do this. It's like, no, these are for you. I gave these to you for you to use and to unlock. What an amazing thing it is that the king of heaven allows us to experience, in this case, our, his love, and then wants to give us the keys that we need to unlock things so can, heaven can be here on earth. So that people can experience what you and I get to experience. 
And that's, that's, that's an amazing thing. So, as we said, I'm talking about the key of love. How many of you guys know that love is powerful? Love is powerful. I'm so glad I get to speak on this one. Love is powerful. See, love can break holds and break things. It can mend things. It brings transformation to people's life. At least it did to mine. You know, when I first, I was joking in the first service because Michelle wasn't in. I go, I got a couple stories about Michelle I'm going to share with you. But I knew she was listening out there as well. But meeting Michelle changed me. We were high school sweethearts, as I said. And all I remember is when I first met Michelle, all of my friends were like, dude, where have you been? I thought we were going to hang out. I haven't seen you forever. What's going on? You know, where have you been? And I just had to say one word, Michelle. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, geez, we'll see you later. You know, and because all I wanted to do was spend more time with her. She, she caught my heart. And I wanted to spend more time with her. And, I, and, and in a way, Michelle changed me. Because everything else kind of became just people could call my name and I couldn't hear a thing. <laughs> Did you say something? You know? And, uh, but I, was, I just wanted to get to know her. And Michelle changed me. But the amazing thing about this is her meeting Jesus transformed me. See, me meeting Michelle changed me. But when she met Jesus, it transformed me. Because love is powerful. See, when M Michelle and I were dating... Um, I, you know, we, we didn't know Jesus before and, um, you know, just lived our lives the way we thought was best. And, and we were dating young and I was off with a band that I was in, um, doing band stuff. And, uh, Michelle went off to, to a Christian camp and she gave her life to Christ. And when she came back, even from the moment I saw her, she was a completely different person. And the reason she was different is because she met the transforming power of Jesus Christ. She was washed with his love and found a life in him that made her a totally different person. I remember talking with her and I was like, what's going on with you? Well, she's like, what do you mean? I go, you're different. She goes, well, how am I different? I go, I don't know. But something's changed. So over the course of a couple of days, she shared with me, I, I gave my heart to Jesus. And I honestly said, well, we're dating. Don't you think you should have asked me first? <laughs> I literally said that. Scary. She's like, no, you don't understand. So she began to explain to me about the love of Jesus and then its transforming power. And I remember there was one scenario. Um, I really wanted, it was so stunning to me. I wanted to know more about this. So she invited me to her youth group, you know, the church where she went to camp and received Jesus. She said, I want you to come with me. And I was like, oh, is it weird? Is it? No, 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 you'll love it. Come on. So we got in my 66 Mustang and uh, we drove over to the church. Now, a little thing you probably don't know about Michelle <laughs> is back in the day when I had my long hair and all that stuff and thought I was the coolest thing on earth, um, M Michelle had a little <laughs> fighting spirit within her. Let's, I'll just say it that way, right? Hey, roll that video. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, there's more videos of me that I wouldn't want to be shown. So I would never do that. But she did. And there was one girl in particular that she was very upset with that um, she, it was known that she would go fight her if she showed up on the scene. Now, praise God, Michelle's met Jesus. Your kids are fine in children's ministry. Don't, you know? But this is what happened. So we pull up to the church. And we stop at the front, and she goes, hey, let me off here. And I go, yeah, I'll go park down there, because the parking lot was around the corner. And she gets out of the car, and she just takes off running up the stairs. And I look up at the top, and guess who's at the top? That girl. And I thought, look, you can fight if you want, but at a church? You just don't do that at a church. Even I know that, you know. So I threw it in park. I ran in my, in my car. I'm like, Michelle, don't. And I'm running up the stairs with, like, slow motion. I couldn't get there. And she embraces her with a hug. And they kind of twist on this top step. And I stopped halfway up. I, I was just, I'm like, what? And I go, what is going on? She says, I'll, I'll tell you later. And I was, I was just stunned. I walk back, get in my car. I drive down to park it. And I'm sitting in that parking place. And I realize, I, I, I remember saying to myself, why do I feel like everything's about to change? Everything I've ever known is about to change. 
Because all of a sudden there's a love for someone where there was a hate. All of a sudden a different Michelle ran up and grabbed this person and whatever was there before was wiped clean and there was a genuine love for one another. And I was floored. So meeting Michelle changed me, but her meeting Jesus transformed my life because through that, that's how I found Jesus. I saw the change in her life. I saw things radically different and I said, I want to be a part of that. And then I gave my life to Christ. Love is powerful. I had the privilege on this last week, I I wasn't able to join you guys for worship. I was up in California, up in the mountains. Um, I just want to say it was 75 degrees and sunny. (laughs) But I had a privilege to spend some time with one of our missional communities up there that's led by Brandon and Anna Lynn and their daughter, daughter, Sierra. And we just had an amazing time. And the thing that I loved about it most is there's about 25 or 30 of us there But to watch the Lord so focused on expressing his love to this leadership team, it was amazing. Everything from the worship we did to the activities that were done. um, I I got to speak an identity and who they are in Christ and then um, also had the opportunity to prophesy over them. I'm not kidding you guys. It was amazing to watch how the Lord orchestrated this whole weekend to make them, to allow them to be sure that with I want you to know that you know that you know that I love you and that I'm for you and I've given my life for you. It was amazing to watch that. I was privileged to be a part of that. Just privileged. John 3.16 in the Passion Translation says this. For this is how much God loved the world. He gave his one and only unique son as a gift. So now everyone who believes in him will never perish but have everlasting life. Love is powerful. And for those of us who are in Christ Jesus, his love is what wooed us to him, what, how we've experienced the transformation we've experienced because he graciously covered us with his love. He made a point. He made a point to tell each and every one of us in a way that we could understand how much he loves us and what he's done for us. And now somewhere along the way, he goes, hey, would you partner with me? That same love you've received that same love I've given you, here's a key. Why don't you go unlock it in the lives of other people? Why don't you go unlock it in scenarios and situations wherever you go? This is yours, all inclusive. Use it. So today we're going to be talking about the key of love. And I want to talk about first, we're talking about the key of love. There's several things that love does in response, in response to what we get to unlock. And the first one is this. Love covers. One of the things that love does is it covers. Listen to Proverbs chapter 10, verses 11 and 12. It says this, The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Hatred stirs up conflict, but love covers over all wrongs. How many wrongs? All wrongs. Listen to that same passage in the uh, Passion Translation. The teachings of the lovers of God are like living truth flowing from the fountain of life. But the words of the wicked hide an ulterior motive. Hatred keeps old quarrels alive. Listen to this. But love draws a veil over every insult and finds a way to make sin disappear. I love the way that it says that. It draws a veil over every insult and finds a way to make sin disappear. That's what love does. A veil over insult. Insults have no chance against the power of God. The power of God is greater. So if someone heaves an insult on me, me using the key in my own life and walking in love, I can let it bounce off. Because I actually know who I am, right? I know how I am in Christ because he gets to say who I am. He gets to identify me. And insults are veiled, draws a veil over them. The other thing I love about this is it says that love finds a way to make sin disappear. It finds a way. It's going gonna, it's gonna to figure out the path. It's, it's going to find a way to make sin disappear. I love that analogy of thinking because that's what happened with us, right? 
The first time somebody ever told me, Tom, your sins are forgiven. Past, present, and future sins. They've been paid for by the blood of Jesus. You're forgiven. <laughs> no, not, not like forgiven, forgiven. Yeah, forgiven. It took me a while to understand that. Because I kept thinking, no, there's got to be something that I could do. No, it was finished on the cross. Amen? The blood of Jesus paid for that. It's not the blood of Jesus plus what I do. It's the blood of Jesus paid for it. Past, present, future sin. I'm forgiven. So it found a way, love found a way in my life to make sin disappear. Where now I didn't have to be sin conscious and think, oh, I, I blew, oh, I messed up, I did this. Instead, I can was, walk in the fullness of Jesus and that grace that he's poured over me. It's an amazing thought. And even in situations where insults fly or people focus on sin, love is a veil over that and it, makes, it finds a way to make that sin disappear. I think that's beautiful. Proverbs 17, 9 says this, love overlooks the mistakes of others, but dwelling on the failures of others devastates friendships. See, love also has the ability to overlook the mistakes. It doesn't say love overlooks mistakes of others because it's super easy and anybody can do it. Right? Does that say that in your Bible? No, it doesn't say it in mine either. Why? Because that's how powerful love is. Mistakes don't trump love. Love trumps mistakes. And it covers it. You know, we live in a society where we always like to, not we, people like to always point out the mistakes of other people, right? If you don't believe me, just drive on the freeways. Right? Here in Atlanta. People let you know when you make a mistake. We try to see how close we can get to the bumper in front of us so no one can get that spot. Because 1.32 seconds is, is worth me being that. You know what I mean? Right? We, we tend to look at the mistakes of others, but love overlooks that. I had an amazing experience when we were going on this camping trip up in California. Uh, I mentioned Sierra was one of the leaders. So everything's fixed. All the people are at the place where we're taking off. We're getting things packed up. We've run our errands. And Brandon says to his daughter, hey, why don't you go ahead and get things ready at the cabin. That way you can move in. We can move right into worship. We could do this. Got it, dad goes. So she goes. We're still preparing, getting things together. And right before we're getting ready to leave, she gets to the cabin that we've rented and there's another family in it. So she calls. Hey, what's the address of the cabin? It's this one. Why? Because there's another family in it. So she says, well, let me go check out, you know, I'll see what's going on, I'll call you back. So she goes up there, knocks on the door, they answer the door, and she says, hey, I'm just trying to figure out, are you guys leaving? Or, and she goes, oh, no, we just got here a little while ago, we're staying in the cabin this weekend. Why do you ask? She goes, well, we rented the cabin as well. And the lady was like, well, I already unpacked. <laughs> you know? Don't, don't make me, you know. It was, it was like, I've already unpacked and my kids are here and we're not going anywhere. And don't you try and Sierra goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want to ruin your vacation. I saw your kids in the back of you guys that look like you're having a good time. I'll call the guy and we'll get this taken care of. And she's like, well, we're not leaving. She goes, I'm not asking you to leave. She goes, let me just call the guy. So she calls the guy who owns the cabin and says, hey, there's a family in there. And he literally says, I'm on a bike ride right now. I'm like, well, pedal your little self where you can take care of this issue because I didn't double book. <laughs> right? But that's not what she says. She says, well, I talked to the family and he says, well, I must have double booked. I don't know what to tell you. So she says, well, I have a group of people coming. And he says, well, I know my neighbor uh, rents his cabin. Um, you could give him a call. And she says, can I have his number? I'm bike riding. He goes, I think it's on the front of his door. So she says, okay. She walks over there, calls the guy. His cabin's not available. So she calls us back. I says, what do you want us to do? And so we go, well, we'll look. So she gets off the phone. She prays with her group. She gets on, um, I think it was Airbnb, finds a cabin, sends a message, rents it, and books us a new cabin. Texts the person that rented us the cabin, hey, don't worry about it. We found another place. Um, says, hey, we're all taken care of, waves to the family. And I, 
in preparing for this message, I thought, how awesome is that, that Sierra just overlooked the mistakes of others and expressed love. She could have got all nodded. She could have told a bunch of people off. She could have got frustrated. She could have done the little bike thing that I said. <laughs> but instead, instead, she chose the way of love. And then we ended up in a cabin. Do you want to finish the story? Way better than the one we had booked. It was right on the Truckee River. I mean, you look out, it's right there. I mean, it was beautiful. It was a little bigger. It was almost the exact same price. It just, we got upgraded. And even more than that, all of the people in her car that were with her got to see God answer a prayer, and they watched one of their leaders respond with overlooking of mistakes. So Jesus was expressed to them. It's an amazing thing. Love covers. The second thing I want to talk about is that love is a canopy. Because not only does love cover over a multitude of sin, it covers mistakes and all of those things. One of the things the Lord is speaking to me is that love is a canopy. And let me explain that to you. So in 1 Peter 4.8, it says this. Above all, consistently echo God's intense love for one another. For love will be a canopy over a multitude of sins. And this is the Passion Translation. And the reason I love this is because it says, above everything, in front of everything, if you're going to put something in the front, put this in front, constantly echo. You know, echo is one of those things where you, hey, hey, hey. It's an exact replica of the first thing that was said, right? It's an echo. It's an echo. So we're constantly, above everything, constantly echo God's intense love. The love that we've received, the amazing forgiveness that we've received. When we didn't deserve it, when we got upset, when we did this, just poured out upon us as sons and daughters. And he says, echo that for one another. For love will be a canopy over a multitude of sins. You know, when I think about this, this, this canopy perspective, you know, canopy does a lot of things. And in the imagery of my mind as I was looking, you know, a canopy has the ability to affect those who are under it. It can be shade for weary days. It can be refuge from a storm. It can keep rain off one's head and it can be an escape from the heat. But a canopy also frees us from the punishment of guilt, from the weight of sin, from hopelessness, and from the lies of the enemy. And I don't know about you, the best example I can give is over me, God uh, erected a canopy of grace where I heard the gospel like I'd never heard before. See, growing up, it was always, Tom, you're a French fry short of a Happy Meal. Yeah, let that one sink for a while, all right? Go through the drive through and you're missing your fries. You got to go all the way back. And I felt like I was always a French fry short of a Happy Meal. Couldn't measure up. It was always do more. It was always try harder. It was always based on my effort and you got to go do, do all of this stuff. And so there's this heavy weight. So I was always met with guilt and shame and, and not measuring up and the weight of my sin and all of those things. And how many of you guys know that gets super tiring? You got to carry all of that stuff down. I mean, I just want to lay down. If it crushes me, it crushes me. I don't know what else to do. But then the Lord erects a canopy of grace. Listen to this passage. This is one of my favorite. I don't have an unfavorite passage. I don't know why I say that, but this, this one I, I really like, and especially for this. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14. It says, for Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, I love this part, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Who's no one? No one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone and the new is here. All of this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. And what is the ministry of rec reconciliation, you might ask? 
That's a tough one. Listen to this. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. That's verse 19. 2 Corinthians verse 5, and God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. How? Not counting people's sins against them. And then he's committed to us this message of reconciliation. Amazing. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. So we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. I love that passage because we get to receive this amazing love from God that our sins are not counted against us. And then he goes, hey, would you do me a favor? You're an ambassador. Would you go tell others and reconcile them to me in the same way? I'm not counting their sins against them. How's that possible? Because it was finished on the cross. And the blood of the sacrifice of Jesus, it was enough. That's amazing. Not only do we get to sit under that canopy, but now the Lord goes, hey, would you do me a favor? Through love, because that's what erects the canopy, go tell other people this amazing truth. And unlock it for them, just like it was unlocked for you. There's a canopy that sits over us. And we have the opportunity to go and erect it over other people and allow that same revelation and that same love to be put over others. Put over others. You know, one of the things this weekend that was pretty awesome, we didn't, I didn't know the Lord was going to do, but there were some people that were there that were just getting hammered, maybe by the lies of the enemy, maybe by situations, struggles. There was one gentleman who had just gone through a lot. His dad had died a year ago, and he was really struggling with that, and then a close friend died. He's just trying to find his way. And man, I watched God erect a canopy over him of love so that he could be freed from this stuff and instead sit under knowing that God loves him He'll never leave him nor forsake him and he's standing right with him even though it's extremely tough that he's facing. And we get to be the ones that take this key and unlock it for people. Isn't that amazing? What a crazy good partnership that we get that to do. So and then the last thing is love is not only a cover and it's not only a canopy, love also releases. Love releases releases. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Everyone knows this passage. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. does not boast. It's not proud. Does not dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. It never fails. And the cool thing about the key of love is we're given this so we can unlock these things in our life. That's why I love Cindy's testimony. Because wherever you go and whatever you do, the Lord, this is yours. This, this is on your key ring, right? The key of love. He's given it to you. And all over, you're going to have an opportunity where God's going to give you a little nudge or he's going to point something out to you. You go, hey, would you do me a favor? Would you give this aspect of love to those people? That's why I love Cindy's testimony. Just an expression of love. Can I pray for you? Trusting the Lord. The Lord nudges her. Hey, why don't you pray for the baby to flip? And she goes, okay. So she goes over there. Guys, the simplicity in which the Lord wants to do things. You never know when he's going to point someone out to you and go, would you do me a favor? Would you physically go over there and hug that person? Because I just want to pour my love on them. We have no idea. We're just going, oh, I guess this person needs a hug. You give him a hug and the Lord drops something. You never know. You know, I've come to realize this. 
There are times when I go to the coffee shop, I'm not really at the coffee shop for coffee. There's times I'm getting gas at the gas station, I'm not really at the gas station to get gas, right? The Lord has me there potentially because somebody needs me to unlock love in some simple way, in some easy expression so that the Lord can remind them or say something to them or encourage them in a difficult situation. How many of you guys know that people all around us need love, right? right? Sometimes it's the easiest thing we can do on top of it's sometimes the hardest thing we can do because it, we've got to break out of our comfort zone. But knowing that you've been given this key, the key of love has been given to you. It's been given to us. And we get to go unlock these things in people's lives. A word of encouragement, a prophetic word, opening a door, letting someone in front of you. You never know what it's going to be. But the effect that it can have on people's life is amazing. So I often find myself in places where the Holy Spirit nudges me and I go, oh, wait a minute. I'm not really here to grocery shop. Darn, because those cookies were looking good. (laughs) There's someone here that the Lord wants me to love in some way. So sometimes, honestly, I just go fishing. I just look around, think, wait for God to highlight something. It was so funny. I was meeting with a guy. This goes back a little ways. And we were just talking scripture. And he's one of the guys in the ministry that, that I was leading. And this, I felt so bad because what he was saying, I couldn't grasp. I was, it was like, wah, 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 you know. But I, I, I'm like, wait, something, I'm, something's going wrong with me. I want to, so I'm, str- I'm like, okay, you know, I'm ready to lick my eyes and do whatever. I'm like, why can't I understand? And then over his shoulder, I see a woman sitting at a table crying. And I go, oh my gosh. I said, can you excuse me for a minute? I don't remember to this day what he was talking about. So I went over there and she was crying and their child was playing on the playground. And I said, ma'am, I'm so sorry. I don't mean to intrude, but I saw, I saw you crying over there. And uh, is everything okay? And she just spills her guts. I mean, tough this, blah, blah, blah. And she, the little kid comes over, knocks on the window and waves at us. And she goes, it's amazing. My kids have no idea that I'm right here struggling and all of this. And I just told her, I said, I think the Lord wanted me to come tell you he's got you. You'll be okay. How do you know that? We talked for a little bit. Our church happened to be across the street. And I said, look, tomorrow's Sunday. She goes, well, I'm leaving. And I go, when are you leaving? And she goes, tomorrow. And I said, well, if you have time, why don't you come visit our church? Long story short, she actually showed up late, but for the first service, she ends up giving her life to Christ, her and her whole family. And then they leave. I never saw them again. We don't always get to see the end of the story, but the power of love has the ability to transform in an amazing way. So I I need to close because I'm I'm going over. Um, One thing I want to say is that Michelle said um, when she was talking about faith, one of the things she mentioned was that um, sometimes the enemy tries to give us fake keys, right? It tries to get us off track by giving us fake keys. Fake keys. I've realized they're just blanks. You know when you go get your, a key made, you got to look for one that looks like yours. You give them the key, and that, that key, that blank, it doesn't unlock a thing. It can't unlock a thing. There's no teeth cut in it. It's, there's nothing cut into it. It's just the blank. You could put a whole bunch of them on your key ring, and you might look important, but you can't unlock a thing. It's not until they get cut in shape. That's what the enemy likes to do. So the things we need to bind when we're talking about love, binding unforgiveness, binding quarreling, insults and fault finding, those got to go. Those are the blanks the enemy tries to throw out there so that he'll keep us from activating in this key of love. The things we need to loose, that's forgiveness, as Colossians 3.13 says. It's unity, as Colossians 3.14. It's honor one another, like Romans 12, and it's encourage one another, as Hebrews 3.13 says. So let me, let me close with this. JJ, would you, would you mind coming up? In John 13, 34, it says this, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. See, the amazing thing about this key of love, it's the thing that distinguishes us as believers. 
It's the thing that makes people go, huh? When we extend love in situations where maybe people aren't expecting love, and one of the things I've learned is some of the people that were in the world that bite you the hardest, and they're the ones that need love the most. They're just a little afraid. They don't know how to respond. But you already have the key of love. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. And I want to challenge you over the next three days. And the reason I say three days is because it's all fresh in our mind. Would you take the key of love and would you look for some person, whether you know them or not, just in your life, it could be work, it could be neighbor, it could be on your street, it could be anywhere. Would you take the key of love and would you go unlock love for them? It could be something you say, the coolest thing is you take a moment to ask the Lord. He's going to show you. He's going to tell you. And somebody who's in a desperate need of an expression of love, the Lord's going to partner with you and you're going to see a transformation. And whether you see it happen right then and there or whether it happens later on, I'm telling you, love is powerful. So today I want to close with this as a prayer response. One of the things that I felt like the Lord was saying is sometimes in life we get to a place where life is is just pounding us. Maybe you're in a situation, I honestly felt like the Lord said there's a few, there's a bunch of people in first service, but we're just the pressures of life, maybe difficulties or, or the long battle or just craziness or whatever it would be, but you find yourself in a place this morning where you're like, I don't know if I can take this anymore. This is just too heavy, I can't carry this. And I believe today the Lord wants to erect a canopy over you that can protect you from the storm and give you hope. And so this is what I'm gonna ask. And I'm gonna ask you if that's you to stand. And I'm not asking you to stand so you can be pointed out. But I want you to stand in just recognition. It spoke to you and this is what I want. And then I'm gonna pray for the Lord to erect a canopy. So if that's you, would you stand? And I'm gonna ask the rest of us in this room to act as tent pegs to that canopy. And so would you gather around those who are standing? Because, you know, we have a saying here at our church that you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. And so if you're in a place where you need love or you're in a place where you need breakthrough or you're in a place where you just need to be reminded of the love of God, then we stand with you and we're all gonna pray together. I wanna make sure everyone who's standing has someone around them. And I just want to pray for us and erect this canopy of love. Would you pray with me? Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for your amazing love. And thank you that right now you are erecting a canopy of peace over your people. Where the lies of the enemy and the difficulty of of hardship or whatever we're facing cannot penetrate in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that today be a a flipping day, even as that testimony said. Circumstances would flip in Jesus' name. If they're difficult, they'd become easy. If it's burdensome, it would become light. Lord, that you would be the one that reigns over these circumstances and situations. If there's sickness, it would be healed in Jesus' name. But whatever is troubling, Lord, I speak, be still and let there be peace in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray that every single person would not only know that you love them and that you said, I'll never leave them nor forsake them. I'll be with them to the very end of the age, but we stand stand as a representation to say that we agree with the Father and we stand with you. Lord, I thank you for this canopy of love. And Lord, every person that stands, I pray a flip, and I pray for transformation and I pray for just a love to rest upon them. Just your love to rest upon them, Lord. And I thank you for that. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.